As you know, we've been doing a series on moving and miracle healing power. We've looked at scriptures that clearly show that God wants people healed, that he's given us miracle healing power, and that Jesus himself has told us to do the works that he did, including him calling and commissioning, anointing and appointing us to go and heal the sick. Plus, we looked at some ways believers can operate in kingdom miracle working power. And now we want to get you activated in your healing ministry. Because just like with any supernatural realm of the kingdom, the way you establish and grow mighty in that realm is to be active in that realm. So don't go anywhere because you're about to discover five easy ways to activate your healing ministry. I'm Robert Hodgkin, and this is the Supernatural Mentoring Series, where we make the supernatural simple so that you can grow in the things of the Spirit and become even more fulfilled and effective in your faith. I know you're here because you're hungry for the supernatural, so be sure to subscribe to this channel so you're notified every time we upload another episode of our Supernatural Mentoring Series. Plus, you'll get notified when we upload a prophetic video or any of our streaming media that equips, encourages, and empowers you as a believer in Jesus Christ. Plus, please share these videos with anyone and everyone you know who's also hungry to grow in the supernatural aspects of their Christian faith. All right, let's jump in and let's talk about five easy ways you can begin to activate your healing ministry because that's the goal of this. This isn't just the supernatural teaching series. This is the supernatural mentoring series. We want to get you activated and give you keys to actually step into all this stuff that we're helping you be aware of that you have in the Holy Spirit through the finished work of the cross. So Number one easy way that you can begin to activate your healing ministry, pay attention. Pay attention in the natural. And what do I mean by that? Just look around you. If you see somebody walking with a limp or a cane or a walker and they've got a, a cast or a sling or anything, they're in a wheelchair, anything, you know, maybe they have an eye patch on or something, What? Ever you see around you that indicates somebody is being oppressed by some form of illness, sickness, weakness, disease, pain, anything, that is an open door for you to go and pray for that person because obviously they're beset with something. And there are very few people you're going to reach out to who don't want to be set free of those things. I'm going to give you one of the keys that makes this simple is I'm going to give you how to get that thing rolling, how to get it started when you see somebody. But first thing is pay attention in the natural. Look around you. If you see anyone with any sign, and like I said, a limp, a cane, a walker, a wheelchair, a sling, a cast, a brace, anything at all, that's an indication. Wow, there's somebody here that needs healing, which means there's somebody here God wants to use me to heal. All right, number two, pay attention in the spirit. What do I mean by that? Listen for words of knowledge. Seek God's heart for words of knowledge. You might walk into some place and he might speak to you and say, hey, knee pain or, or uh, old injury or this or that. But everywhere you go, be positioning yourself to hear from God about something going on with somebody. Because I want to tell you, if you walk up to somebody and it's not obvious and you walk up to them and say, hey, I know this is kind of an odd question. But by any chance, is there something going on with your liver? And if they, they look, how did you know that? Now the door's open. God actually just whispered it to my heart. And what I know of God is anything he reveals, he wants to heal. If he took the time to share with me what's going on with you, I believe that's because he wants to do something about it. Can I pray for you? So pay attention in the spirit wherever you are. Let your heart be open. Let your thoughts be open. Go back and watch the series on the prophetic that'll help you, remind you, and help strengthen you in all the areas God's trying to get your attention. He's trying to speak to you. He's trying to show you something. Be aware of, of the voice of God, the heart of God. Pay attention in the spirit and listen and seek him for words of knowledge wherever you go. The other thing to be paying attention for in the spirit is, uh, talk about words of knowledge. Let's call this feelings of knowledge. And what do I mean by that? 
you might walk into the grocery store and all you're thinking about is your shopping list on your phone and you're scrolling through it. And all of a sudden, as you're pushing the cart, you get a weird, painful twinge in your shoulder. And you think, that's weird. There's nothing wrong with my shoulder. That might be a feeling of knowledge where God is highlighting to you, there's someone probably right in your proximity who's got a shoulder issue. So then look around. It might, might, might happen is that feeling of knowledge might make you all of a sudden aware of somebody who's got their arm in a sling and something going on with their shoulder. Or you may just want to wait for God to then highlight say, okay, Lord. I'm, I'm willing to trust that you, that twinge in my pain, in my knee, that twinge in my shoulder, that pain in my elbow, that sharp, you know, uh, feeling I got just above my kidney, whatever that is, God, I trust that you're trying to get my attention, that somebody has that something going on in that area. Now, would you highlight to me who to approach? And then you simply walk up to him and same thing. You say, Hey, I know this may be a crazy question. Do you have something going on with your kidneys? And then you can even ask when you get the feeling of knowledge, you can press in a little bit more and say, God, what's going on with their kidneys? And if you hear something, great. And if you don't, that's okay. But it's a simple way to reach out. Because again, people, most nine times out of 10, the response is, how did you know that? And then you can tell them and it opens the door. So pay attention in the natural, look around you, be aware, pay attention in the spirit, be listening for words of knowledge and be willing to receive feelings of knowledge. Number three, create an outreach. Get really intentional about it. Create an outreach. And let me give you a very simple way to do this. We used to do this all the time in the uh, miracle outreach schools that I taught when we did our Operation Extreme Love Thailand trips. And I've told you guys about those. We'd have people, believers come in from all over the world and join me in Pattaya, Thailand. And we'd have groups from anywhere from 30 to 70 people that we'd you know, train in all of this and then take them out into the streets and into all, all throughout Pattaya, Thailand and do miracle ministry, healing ministry, word of not prophetic ministry, salvation ministry, obviously. And one of the things we like to do is we would simply, because it was a it was a tourist place too, um, and we would make these signs that just say need healing question mark or need a healing question mark. And we'd have teams go out on the beaches and hold up the signs real big because there was so much foot traffic. And sometimes we'd also pray into it beforehand for words of knowledge or feelings of knowledge. And we'd get conditions that God knew people walking by would have. So we'd also like around the edge of the sign, we'd write the conditions. And sometimes people would come up and say, need a healing. And, and they might just say, yeah, I do. What is this all about? And we'd tell them and we'd often get to pray for them. Or they'd look on the sign and say, you know, diabetes, because um, we got no word of knowledge about that. They're like, that's crazy. I have diabetes. What are you guys doing? So they might come up and ask about one of the conditions on the sign because they have it. They might come up and just say, hey, what's going on here? What is this all about? Or they may come up and say, yeah, I do need a healing, even if there's nothing specific. But again, I can't emphasize this enough. Even if they just come up and say, what are you guys doing? It's all opportunity. It's all an open door. They're actually making the contact saying, yes, I have this. Yes, I'd like prayer for a healing. Uh, what the heck are you guys doing? But it's all an open door. It's a very, very uh, simple outreach. And then for those of you who are more bold and just want to get after it, you can do things like go to emergency rooms. Now, I want to be honest with you. I would highly encourage you to be subtle to not go in and stand up on the chair and, and yell. But if God tells you to do that, then go in and stand up in a chair and shout, Jesus is here to heal. Who needs a healing? And obviously everybody there needs a healing. But we used to have teams go in and just sit in the emergency room, waiting room, and then turn to the person and say, you know, hey, what's going on with you? And sometimes people who are hurting, they don't want to interact. That's okay. But you'll be amazed at how many people do want to interact, which is another key we're going to get to. Um, but you can go to emergency room. You can go online when, you know, go online at pharmacy, get in line at a pharmacy. And as you're waiting for a turn, which you may or may not need, ask the person in front of you, ask the person behind you, you know, gently and suddenly, what are you, what are you getting a prescription filled for? And again, they may say none of your business, or they may just stare at you, but you'd be amazed that how many people will open up and they might say, oh, I'm getting such and such for a heart condition. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry you're dealing with that. Hey, 
can I pray for you? So those are all really simple outreaches depending on your level of boldness, but be intentional or be intentional and go to the grocery store and walk around and do number one and two, pay attention in the natural, pay attention in the spirit. You can do this as you go through your day. And that's wonderful because that's ultimately what we want to learn to do. And that's ultimately the way you're going to really activate a healing ministry is by just through your day, always being aware, always being willing to connect and co-labor with God and then stepping out. But I want to tell you when you're first starting, it's really good to be intentional. And maybe you decide, you know what, for 30 minutes today, I'm going to go to the grocery store and I'm going to go to the the Walmart or the Kmart or the this mart or the that mart, or I'm going to go here and I'm going to go there, or I'm going to go shopping at the mall for half an hour. And I'm going to, I'm going to look around. Now I'll be honest, we've been kicked out of a fair number of malls because they consider even prayer and, and, and sharing the gospel. Um, what do they call it? Solicitation, I think soliciting. And, and we've been asked to leave, but you know, within the 30 minutes to two hours before we've been asked to leave, people have been healed, people have been saved, but you can go to public places like parks and do that with the sign. If you're not quite feeling bold enough yet to just walk up to somebody or get online at the pharmacy or go to a ER waiting room or walk around the grocery store or whatever, or whatever the mart is and say, hey, can I pray for you and be that intentional about it on the outreach? Get a sign that says need healing and then be in a place where people are, you know, able to stop and ask questions. You don't want to just be in a street corner where only cars are driving by and they may honk, but you're not going to get much of a chance to pray for them. And then if you do that, remember, you can pray beforehand, get words of knowledge, list those conditions on the sign. And that's another point of engagement for people who are coming by who are either going to look at that and go, oh, my gosh, I have that going on. What's this all about? Or may just come up and say, what the heck are you guys doing? It's all opportunity. So number one, pay attention in the natural. Number two, pay attention in the spirit. Number three, create an outreach. And then number four, and this may be the easiest of them all, go online. Just jump online and 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 pray for people. You can do it. Record, if you're not ready to go live, I get it. But again, pray, pray for a condition, get words of knowledge, and then record a short video where you're ministering to people for the conditions that you have heard God wants to heal. I did this years ago when I got a word of knowledge about lungs and I was in a meeting and nobody responded to it. So then I came home and did a video. And for years, that was my most watched video. I don't remember how many watches it got, but it, at a time that that especially way back when when i was getting 30 40 50 views was a big deal this one got i think hundreds if not over a thousand views way back when i barely ever got a hundred views people would see healing for lungs and to this day that video gets watched and we get testimonies of people people being healed by it so you can pre-record ministering into words of knowledge and then upload it anywhere and everywhere make it short and you can put it on Instagram and all, all the streaming social media, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, all those things. I'm only on a handful and I only know about a handful, but you probably know about dozens and you can do a three or four minute video praying for that condition and upload it. So go online, get words of knowledge and create videos and web streams. You can do a live stream, jump on Facebook live, jump on YouTube live. And start by praying and hit record. And you can start by recording though, ministering into those words of knowledge that you had received. But if you want to go live, then be aware if people are jumping on. And if you see them jump on when you finish one prayer, say, hey, welcome, Jesus Believer 224. Do you have anything going on in your body? Post it in the comments. I'll pray for you right now. Go online with this. It's so easy. It's so simple. And man, I cannot tell you the number of miracles we've seen all over the world through me streaming right here from this little office in Maricopa, Arizona. And if you're going to go online, I want to encourage you with something. Start with what you have. You don't even have to put a whole bunch of money into it. Yes, lighting helps. Yes, a good camera helps. Yes, a, a decent setup helps. But you know what? God can work with you through the camera, the 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 tablet or or ePad, iPad that you have, or the computer you have with whatever resolution that camera is. Just start. Why? Because what is our goal here? To get you 
activating your healing ministry. This is five easy ways to activate your healing ministry. So just jump into it. Go online with what you have. If you decide you really love doing that and you want to do one every day or one every week or whatever you feel like, then you can go on Amazon or wherever you want to go or to Walmart or wherever and and buy some lighting for your setup and maybe, you know, a, a, a little bit better, like, you know, a high definition webcam. But you can do it right from your phone. My goodness, the number of miracles that happened because somebody took the time in their prayer time to ask God, who does he want to heal? What does he want to heal? And then sitting in their prayer chair in their prayer place, just opening up their phone and streaming a short video or recording a short video and releasing it. So number four, uh, go online. And then number five, five easy ways to activate your healing ministry. Number five is probably the most important. Keep it simple. What do I mean by that is, look, we talked, I think it was last episode about when you start stepping out in any of this, there's always some level of having to deal with intimidation and hesitation or or intimidation and inconvenience. Let's get real. It's not the most convenient thing to just walk up to somebody and say, hey, can I pray healing for you? You have no idea where they, you know, this. so here's my key to keeping it simple. Walk up to somebody and say hi, and then have a bit of a conversation and listen for where Jesus shows up. Or if you're doing key number one and you're paying attention in the natural and um, 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 or, and, and you're, you've embraced, all right, I'm really going to lean in to way number one to make it easy to activate my healing ministry. I'm going to pay attention to the natural everywhere I go. And you see that person with the sling or the cast or the cane or the limp or the whatever. You walk up to them and what I, to this day, 20 years in, what I do is I start, I keep it simple to this day, unless I have an absolute word of knowledge. And then nine times out of 10 with a word of knowledge, I'll often start with this anyways. I walk up to them and I say, hi, and I see if they're willing to even engage with just a friendly person saying hi. And then if they are, and I've been paying attention to the natural and I see that limp, I say, hey, I hope you don't mind me asking, but I noticed you limping. Are you okay? Do you know how alone most people feel, how ignored most people feel, how invisible and denied most people feel? You, with genuine compassion and the genuine heart and caring of God, caring more about them even than you do to to, to activate your healing ministry and operate in healing power, which is great. Be passionate about that. But I'm telling you, if you're willing to simply go up to them, say, hey, I, I couldn't help but notice are you doing okay? Or if it's, if, if say that I've done this many times and I've seen like a wrist and a brace or something, I did this with a, 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 a woman at the till when I was checking out of the grocery store recently, she had a big um, brace, not a cast, but this kind of brace on her hand. And I said, Hey, I couldn't help but notice your brace. What happened to your wrist? And she told me, oh, it's actually not my wrist. It's carpal tunnel. And, you know, there was no line behind me. And I listened to her. And I, was no, I wasn't in a rush for, for her to be done and me to jump in and say, can I pray for you? I listened. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that must be painful. And it must limit you. And is it hard wearing that brace all the time? Genuine, not working her. Genuine. Keep it simple. Be genuine, loving, uh, genuinely interested and genuinely caring about the person in front of you. They'll feel that. And then I can't tell you the number of times I simply say, hey, I'm a Christian and I have seen God heal people all over the world. Can I pray a quick prayer for your wrist? I believe God can change things for you right here, right now. Keep it simple. Say hello engage in a bit of a conversation and genuinely be interested in them. Most people want to be seen, want to be heard, and most people feel like nobody cares about them. And and not just people who are alone. There are people who are living with family or living with a spouse and things are hard at home and people at work and they don't feel like anybody cares about them. If you show up with the heart of God, and you say something as simple as hi, you're paying attention to the natural, you're paying attention to the spirit, you hear that somebody has you know, something going on with um, a, a tumor, and you walk up to somebody and you start with hi, how you doing? How's your day going? And listen, and they may say something that, you know, the number of people I've done this with, and they just go, oh man, can't wait for today to be over. And I'll just say, wow, I'm so sorry. It sounds like you're having a rough day. And another rough day. Do you mind if I ask, is, uh, is there anything going on? Can I help in any way? 
Well, my goodness, if you, I just need a job. All right. Now that's not healing ministry, but you know what? I have seen God open doors in miraculous ways all over the world. Can I pray for you for a job? Oh, it works the same thing. They might say, um, I'm, I'm really worried about my spouse who has such and such going on. Hey, can I pray for him or her right now? Or if they say, yeah, I really need a job and you pray and they're feeling God's presence, then you can say, this, this may be an odd question to follow up with, but do you have anything going on with your, your liver or your heart or whatever you heard? That's another way to lean into that. But keep it simple. You don't have to walk up to them and say, I am, I am God's man or God's woman of power and thus saith the Lord. Just keep it simple. Start with hello and genuinely engage and listen for how you can be a blessing to somebody. So there you go. That's five easy ways to activate your healing ministry. Pay attention in the natural, pay attention in the spirit, create an outreach, go online and keep it simple. So here's the other things I want you to do. I'm going to ask you to post in the comments below any ideas you have on simple ways, easy ways for people who are watching this. You may have better ideas than I do. Post some ideas on other ways to make it simple and easy to step out into healing ministry, to help us get everybody activated in healing ministry. And then something else I want you to do, after you've gone and done this, come back and post your comments, share your testimony, share what you saw God do, share your questions. And then finally, one last thing I'm gonna ask you to post. You, I mentioned this last episode, we're gonna do a whole episode on praying for the sick and going online and moving in miracle healing ministry. So post in the comments below anywhere you need a healing or any condition you're overcoming where you need a healing or a loved one, because I'm going to compile all that. And oh my gosh, you guys have responded. It may be one of our longest episodes ever, or maybe we'll just do a whole bunch of them for different areas of healing. But I don't want you to miss out. You post below where you need healing and where you are, or a loved one you know needs healing so that we can be praying for you. Um, and then I also want to make sure I've got a free gift for you this month, and I've got a really cool announcement. I think you know this, but our Supernatural Mentoring Series has become a book imprint. And the first book in our Supernatural Mentoring Series has come out. It's Dunamis Made Simple by Patricia King. I wrote the foreword. And it's all about, it's a guide on how to receive and activate the power of God. It makes it simple for you to receive and activate the dunamis power, the five-fold aspect, the five realms of dunamis power. Patricia breaks it down and like everything in our Supernatural Mentoring Series makes it simple. So go to, you can go to amazon.com, you can go to patriciaking.com, you can go to patriciakingministries.com um, and, and, and you can get your copy today so that you've got that dunamis power, the five-fold aspect of dunamis power, all of it operating in your life and through your life. And then I told you we've got a free gift for you this month. Before I get to that, I always have to say thank you to our Robert Hodgkin Ministry partners. You guys help make everything we do possible from all the media that we create, like the Supernatural Mentoring Series, like our Heroes Arise broadcasts, like our prophetic videos, and, and the TV show, The Truth About Men, that we're still working through some post-production issues on, but we're, we're getting closer to actually being able to get that out to some different Christian networks, and of course, we'll upload it online as well. And you also help us go to so many places in the world that may not be able to afford to bring in other bigger ministries. We're able to cover our expenses and go into the places God tells us to go. You, our partners, our go team, you help make that happen. You help us go to the whole wide world with ministry, meetings, missions, and media with the presence, power, and personality of Jesus Christ. So thank you. If you haven't partnered with Robert Hodgkin Ministries yet, but you've been blessed by this, the, the, this series or our other series or other content, I would encourage you to pray into partnering with us, being part of our Go team and helping us go to the whole wide world in all those different ways that I talked about. Here's one of the other blessings. I got a free gift for you, but I've also got uh, something that God told me to do every day this month and going forward. God has said that we at Robert Hodgkin Ministries have entered a season of enlargement, 
um, expansion, multiplication, and increase, and specifically in five key areas. And he has me praying over our partners every single day. Because when you partner with us, you come under that canopy of blessing, canopy of anointing, canopy of cover, but also canopy of promise. So I'm declaring over all of our partners, increase, expansion, enlargement, and everything you've been created for and you are called to. Plus, here's the free gift. Anyone who partners with us for $30 or more a month, I'm going to send you a free download of my teaching on God of the impossible. This is one of my favorite teachings, one of my most popular teachings. I think one of my most important teachings because it came out of a visitation where the Lord came and said, I want to reintroduce myself to my people as God of the impossible. And he showed me the handful of places in the Bible where he did that. And what was cool is every time he did it, it was to someone who had been given a promise, who had kind of toiled and tried to make it happen, had made a horrible mess and it looked like it was never going to come to pass. They totally missed it or they totally messed it up. He declares he's God of the impossible. And then he brings them into what he has promised. I want to get that teaching in your hand. Now, you can go to my, my website, click resources, and just grab one for yourself. But if you choose to partner with us and be a blessing with us, we want to partner with you and be a blessing with you. Not only will we be praying for you in those areas I'm talking about, but we're going to send you a free download of God, of the impossible. All right, I think that's everything. The last thing I'll say is, again, be sure to share these videos with anyone you know who also wants to grow in the supernatural aspects of their Christian faith. When you like and share the videos, it does something to the algorithm. It's a big help to us. And of course, please subscribe so that I will see you here next time when we upload another episode of our Supernatural Mentoring Series. If you're hungry for more of the supernatural, you don't have to wait for the next Supernatural Mentoring Series video. I recommend you go and get a copy of my new book, Realms of Power, Operating in Untapped Dimensions of Holy Spirit Power Today. You can get it through roberthotchkin.com, amazon.com, barnesandnoble.com. You can go to your local bookstore, and if they don't have it on the shelf, they'll order it in for you. And if you happen to like eBooks, well, you can get a Kindle edition from Amazon, or you can get an iBook edition from Apple Books. But anywhere in the world, you can get a copy, either a hard copy or a, a, a digital copy, an, an eBook copy of Realms of Power. And it'll open up 12 different supernatural realms of power in the Holy Spirit to you. Every single chapter is another, it's about another realm, shows you scripturally what you have and gives you keys on how to begin to move in it. So you can start establishing these realms in your life and in the earth through your life. There are things like the power of faith, the power to work miracles. Um, the power to shift atmosphere, the power of tongues, the power of decree, the power to create wealth, and so much more. Get your copy of Realms of Power and start moving in the supernatural aspects of your Christian faith today.